Hello, I'm Cresta Cow and I'm reading Hash Train Your Dragon. And I think I've got up to, let's see, oh yes, chapter five. A chat with old Wrinkly. The next morning, Hiccup checked the dragon under his bed. It was fast asleep. When his mother, Valhalla asked him at breakfast, how did initiation go yesterday, dear? Hiccup said, oh, it was fine. I caught my dragon. That's nice, dear, Valhalla replied vaguely. Stoic the Vast looked up briefly from his bowl and boomed, excellent, excellent, before getting back to the more important task of shoveling food into his mouth. Can you see him there? Yes. Stoic the Vast is the traditional kind of very tough, huge Viking. After breakfast, Hiccup went to sit on the front step beside his grandfather, who was smoking a pipe. It was a beautiful, cold, clear winter's morning with not a breath of wind and the sea all around as flat as glass. Old Wrinkly blew out smoke rings contentedly as he watched the sun coming up. Hiccup shivered and chucked stones into the bracken. Neither of them spoke for a very long time. At last Hiccup said, I got that dragon. I said you would, didn't I? replied Old Wrinkly, very pleased with himself. Old Wrinkly had taken up soothsaying in his old age, mostly unsuccessfully, because soothsaying is looking into the future, and looking into the future is a complicated business. So he was particularly pleased that he got this right. Something extraordinary, you said, complained Cake Up. A truly unusual dragon, you said, an animal that would really make me stand out in a crowd. Absolutely, agreed Old Wrinkly. The entrails were undeniable. The only extraordinary thing about this dragon, continued Hiccup, is how extraordinarily small it is. And that it is super unusual. I'm even more of a laughing stock than ever. Oh dear, said Old Wrinkly, chuckling in a wheezy way over his pipe. Hiccup looked at him reproachfully. Old Wrinkly hurriedly turned the laugh into a cough. Size is all relative, Hiccup, said Old Wrinkly. All of these dragons are super small compared to a real sea dragon. A real sea dragon is 50 times as big as that little creature. A real sea dragon from the bottom of the ocean can swallow 10 large Viking ships in one gulp and not even notice. A real sea dragon is a cruel, careless mystery like the mighty ocean itself. One moment calm as a scallop, the next raging like an octopus. Well, here on Burke, said Hiccup, well, we haven't got any sea dragons to compare anything with. My dragon is just considerably smaller than everybody else's. You're getting off the point. Am I? asked Old Wrinkly. The point is, I just don't see how I'm ever going to become a hero, said Hiccup gloomily. I'm the least heroic boy in the whole ho uh, hooligan tribe. Oh, for sure, this ridiculous tribe, fumed Old Wrinkly. OK, so you're not what you would call a born hero. You're not big and tough and charismatic like Snot Loud, but you're just going to have to work at it. You're going to have to learn how to be a hero the hard way. Anyway, said Old Wrinkly, it might just be what this tribe needs, a change in leadership style. Because the thing is, times are changing. We can't get away with being bigger and stronger and more violent than everyone else anymore. Imagination. That's what this tribe needs. A hero of the future is going to be, have to be clever and cunning, not just a big lump with overdeveloped muscles. Like he's going to have to, they're going to have to stop everybody quarrelling among themselves and get them to face the enemy together. How am I going to persuade anybody to do anything? Asked Hiccup. They've started calling me Hiccup the Useless. This is not a great name for a military leader. You have to see the bigger picture, Hiccup continue oil wrinkly, ignoring him. You called a few names. You're not a natural at Bashy Ball. Who cares? These are very little problems in the grand scheme of things. It's all very well for you to say they're little problems, said Hiccup crossly, but I have a lot of little problems. I have to train this super small dragon in time for Thursday, Thursday, or be thrown out of the hooligan tribe forever. Ah, uh, yes, said Old Wrinkly thoughtfully. There's a book on this subject, isn't there? Mind me, how does the great Professor Yobbish of Meathead University say that you should train a dragon? He thinks you should yell at it, said Hiccup, gloomily chucking stones again. Show the beast to his master by the sheer charismatic force of your personality, that sort of thing. I have about as much charisma as a stranded jellyfish and yelling is just another thing I am useless at. 
Yes, said old Winkley, but maybe you'll have to learn how to train your dragon the hard way. You know a very great deal about dragons, don't you, Hiccup? All that dragon watching you've been doing over the years? That's a secret, said Hiccup uncomfortably. I've seen you talking to them, said old Winkley. That's not true, protested Hiccup, going bright red in the face. OK, then, said old Winkley, calmly smoking his pipe. It's not true. There was silence for a bit. It is true, admitted Hiccup. But for Thor's sake, don't tell anybody. They wouldn't understand. Ah, dragon whispering, talking to dragons, is a highly unusual skill, said old Winkley. Maybe, said old Winkley, you can train a bad dragon better by talking to it than yelling at it. That's sweet, said Hiccup, and a very touching thought. However, a dragon is not a fluffy creature like a dog or a cat or a pony. A dragon is not going to do what you say just because you ask it pretty please. From what I know about dragons, said Hiccup, uh, I should say that yelling at it was a pretty good method. But it has its limitations, doesn't it? Old Winkley pointed out. I would say that yelling was a highly effective on a dragon smaller than a sea lion and positively suicidal if you want to try it on something larger. Why don't you come up with some alternative training schemes yourself. You might be able to add something to Professor Yobbish's book. I've often thought that that book needs a little something extra. I can't quite put my finger on it. Words, said Hiccup. <laughs> that book needs a lot more words. And I'm going to read you chapter six because it's really exciting. And I can't resist. Meanwhile, deep in the ocean, Meanwhile, deep in the ocean, but not so very far from the Isle of Berg, a real sea dragon, such as old Winkley had been describing, lay sleeping on the seabed. He was indescribably large. He had been there so long that he almost seemed to be part of the ocean floor itself, a great underwater mountain covered in shells and barnacles, some of his limbs half buried in the sand. Generation after generation of little hermit crabs had born and died in the dragon's ears. Hundreds and hundreds of years he'd slept because he'd had rather a large meal, this dragon. He'd had the luck to catch a Roman legion camping on a cliff top. They were completely cut off and he had spent an enjoyable afternoon wolfing down the whole lot of them from commanding officer to lowliest private. Horses, chariots, shields and spears, the entire lot went down the ravenous reptilian gullet. And while things such as a golden tarot will are an additional source of fibre to a dragon's diet, they do take some time to digest. So the dragon had crawled down into the depths of the ocean and gone into a sleep coma. Dragons can stay in this suspended state for eternity, half dead, half alive, buried under fathom after fathom of icy cold seawater. Not a muscle of this particular dragon had moved for hmm, six or seven centuries. But the previous week, a killer whale who had chased some seals unexpectedly deep was surprised to notice a slight movement in the upper eyelid the dragon's right eye. An ancestral memory stirred in the whale's brain and he swam away from there as fast as he could. And a week later, the sea around the dragon mountain, which had previously been teeming with rock crabs and lobsters and shoals and shoals of fish, was a great underwater desert. Not a mollusk stirred, not a scallop shimmied. Only sign of life for miles and miles was the rapid jerking of both the dragon's eyelids fluttering up and down as if the dragon had suddenly gone into a light of sleep and was dreaming who knows what dark dream. So it sounds like that dragon might at some point wake up and then they've got a very big problem. Old Winkley could be right. There are some problems larger than Hiccup's little problems. Anyway, you can listen to chapter seven. Oh, Toothless Wakes Up. Oh, one of my favourite chapters tomorrow.